Hey kids, are you ready for the beginning of a new dynasty? Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania will introduce us to Kang the Conqueror. And the scariest thing about our new MCU Big Bad is that it's his destiny to win. That is, unless Scott Lang has anything to say about it. I don't have to win. We both just have to lose. The upcoming Ant-Man 3 will finally put the Multiverse Saga's main villain front and center, with the time-traveling, dimension-hopping Conqueror coming to blows with the Ant family. Quick side note, has any character in the MCU had more of a villain glow up than Scott Lang? I mean, we went from Yellow Jacket, who's your standard evil version of the hero, and trust me, we'll get back to him later, to the unstable but ultimately not truly villainous ghost, to the MCU's new arch villain. Say what you will about the Ant-Man movies, they certainly know how to up the stakes. As I was saying, Quantumania will follow our heroes as they're transported into the Quantum Realm and meet its inhabitants, as well as its blue masked ruler. As we learned in the season 1 finale of Loki, Kang has his sights set on taking over the multiverse. But in order to do that, he'll need Scott's help to escape the Quantum Realm first. How exactly does he plan on doing that? Well, Kang's actual plan is still being kept pretty tightly under wraps. What's he up to, man? What's he doing? However, the trailers have given us some pretty good looks at Kang's army, as well as the raw power that he himself possesses. I mean, once the sleeve comes off, you know Scott's in some deep doo-doo. His power is overwhelming. You could even say it's over 9,000. So it's very possible that Kang just might join the ranks of MCU villains who actually succeed in their evil plans. Phase 4 was criticized by many for feeling somewhat directionless, with no real overarching story appearing to tie together its installments. But Kang's escape from the Quantum Realm and Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania could very well be the thing that connects all of these loose threads for Phase 5, finally paying off plot elements like the beacon sent out by Shang-Chi's rings, or the origin of Kamala Khan's bangle. The trailers for Quantumania, especially the second one, strongly suggest that Kang may even straight up kill Scott Lang before the credits roll, which I think is a pretty good indication that he won't won't actually die. Marvel trailers have been known to give away a lot, but something tells me that they wouldn't telegraph his death this obviously. Instead, I think there's a pretty high probability of Kang disposing of the Ant family in some other way, like trapping them in the Quantum Realm or even sending them to some other universe where they can't bother him. Right now, I'm gonna run with the second option, just because we already did the whole Scott stuck in the Quantum Realm thing before Endgame. But my point is that there's no way Kang just lets everyone walk away from this movie unscathed because then they would just go warn the Avengers about him and totally ruin the surprise. Party pooper. If anyone is gonna die, it'll probably be either Hank Pym or Janet Van Dyne. Most likely Hank, because, I mean, Michael Douglas just looks like he's getting so tired of being in these movies. Another element that heavily weighs the scales in Kang's favor is the fact that he's been around, well, forever. In the words of his own variant, He Who Remains, I know it all. And I've seen it all. As much as I like Scott Lang, you kinda have to admit that he's way out of his league here, so I think Kang's escape from the Quantum Realm is a pretty sure thing. But what will his next move be? Well, the dude's got a dynasty to create. One of the most famous Marvel Comics stories to star our favorite green and purple suited conqueror is the Kang Dynasty. In this early 2000s Avengers story arc, Kang launches an invasion of Earth that is so powerful that Earth's mightiest heroes are eventually forced to surrender, making the Conqueror the first Marvel villain to physically conquer the world. In the current MCU, the Avengers are somewhat fractured. We've got a new Captain America, a new Hulk, a Black Panther who doesn't really seem to have the team super high on her list of priorities, and several fresh-faced heroes, none of whom have extensively worked together in the way our last lineup of Avengers did. Combine that with the fact that the next Avengers movie is confirmed to be an adaptation of none other than the Kang Dynasty, and yeah, it's not looking too good for Earth. Oh, we're doomed! Every year we're doomed! Still, as I mentioned previously, there's a number of lingering Avengers-related plot threads from Phase 4 that are more likely than not to be connected to Kang. Based off of the footage we've seen from Quantumania's trailers, the design of Kang's Quantum Realm City seems to be heavily based on rings and ring-like objects. This, of course, calls to mind the Ten Rings, as well as Miss Marvel's bangle. I've gone over these connections in a previous video, so I won't go too far in depth here, but essentially I believe that Kang will serve as the unifying factor who will cause the seemingly unrelated heroes of Phase 4 to fight alongside each other in Avengers 5. I went over Shang-Chi and Miss Marvel, but there's also a big potential tie to Moon Knight with Kang, since one of his most iconic variants in the comics is an ancient Egyptian pharaoh named Rama Tut. 
Additionally, the fact that Kang and his variants have seemingly been around since the beginning of time means that the Eternals could have crossed paths with him at some point, putting them under the Avengers' radar as well. And there's one other group of heroes who, in the comic book source material, have a direct connection to Kang and his variants, down to him even sharing a last name with some of them. Yes, I'm talking about the Fantastic Four. Kang first appeared as Ramatut in 1963's Fantastic Four number 19, before going on to debut in his more familiar form in a 1964 issue of The Avengers. Over the years, it was revealed that Kang is actually a distant descendant of Reed Richards' time-traveling father, bearing the name Nathaniel Richards, and he fought his ancestors numerous times across the time stream. I don't think it's a coincidence that we've got a Fantastic Four movie coming up right before the Kang Dynasty, and the team's MCU debut would be a perfect place to throw in yet another variant of Kang. During their film's events, the team could travel back in time to ancient Egypt and confront Ramatut, like in the comics. Maybe there we could also set up Apocalypse or something like that too, but that kind of feels like asking for a lot. No matter what, Kang's meddling with the timeline could serve as the explanation for why the FF haven't appeared in the MCU yet, with them reappearing in the present day just in time to join the Avengers in fighting him. In the comic book Kang Dynasty storyline, a big part of Kang's plan involved him announcing that any villains who joined his side would have a place in his new world. This led to a number of groups, including the Deviants and the Atlanteans, launching attacks that distracted the Avengers while Kang put his own plans into action. Both the Deviants and the Atlanteans, or the, the Talocanians, Talocan... The, the people from Talokan were introduced in Phase 4, so it would make sense to see them return for the Kang Dynasty. But, on the other hand, the Deviants are pretty much wild animals, while the citizens of Talokan are noble warriors, who just don't seem like they'd be interested in siding with a madman like Kang. Instead, it would be really cool to see Kang recruit a number of past supervillains to join his cause. We could finally have the return of characters like Justin Hammer, Red Skull, Scorpion, and the Kree Empire, among the ranks of Kang's army. And of course, we can't forget about MODOK. From the very brief glimpses we got of him in the Quantum Mania trailer, it seems as if the giant head formerly known as Yellow Jacket will be serving as Kang's henchman in the Quantum Realm. As much as I feel like they'll probably kill Modok off by the end of the movie, I'm also really hoping that he'll stick around and continue to wreak havoc in the Kang Dynasty. Okay, I'm just gonna take a quick detour to talk about Modok for a second. Not only are we finally getting introduced to Modok in Quantum Mania, but we are getting a full comic accurate representation of him, giant head and all. He looks dumb as hell. Hell, and I love it. More stupid looking villains in the MCU, please. At this point, I'm crossing my fingers for characters like Stiltman, the Trapster, and of course, Big Wheel. I mean, if they're doing MODOK, the sky's the limit. Sorry, I got really off topic there. Where was I? Another important element of the Kang Dynasty was the introduction of a character named Marcus, who appeared to be the Conqueror's son. As the story went on, we learned that Marcus, who used the identity of the Scarlet Centurion, was actually one of many clones, who Kang was testing to see if he would eventually be able to serve as his heir, hence the word Dynasty in the story arc's title. To be honest, I don't really think Marcus will end up making the jump to the film adaptation because we've already just got so many new characters to juggle. Instead, my guess is that we'll see a character similar to him who will instead be one of Kang's variants, specifically Iron Lad. For those of you who don't know, Kang once went back in time to try and convince a younger version of himself to become a villain earlier and begin his conquest sooner. Instead, he had the opposite effect, and this younger variant suited up in armor reminiscent of Iron Man's and assembled the Young Avengers, becoming a frequent thorn in Kang's side. So your mission did not go as planned. Come Avengers 5, it wouldn't surprise me to see Kang be accompanied by one of his younger variants, who he intends to mold into a successor that will carry on his name and help to spread his brand of chaos across the multiverse. However, after seeing the true evil that lies within the Conqueror's heart, his younger variant switches sides and joins the heroes, modifying his technology and leading the young Avengers against him. Fans have been speculating for a long time as to when and if Iron Lad will be introduced into the MCU, since he's a pretty important character in the comics, and the film adaptation of the Kang Dynasty could be a perfect place for us to finally meet this younger, more heroic variant. We've talked about Quantumania and the Kang Dynasty. Now let's take a look at the conclusion to the multiverse saga, Avengers 6 Secret Wars. By all accounts, this will be the biggest MCU movie of all time, and it will supposedly be a direct follow-up to the Kang Dynasty, similar to how Endgame continued the immediate story of Infinity War. As such, I think it's pretty likely that Kang will continue to menace our heroes during its events, although it's also possible that they'll kill him off at the end of Kang Dynasty and have an even bigger villain, like Galactus, Doctor Doom, or the Beyonder, replace him for Secret Wars. 
Speaking of the Beyonder, there's been a rumor picking up traction recently that he will be depicted as yet another Kang variant in the MCU. Marvel fans will know that the Beyonder originally appeared as a nearly omnipotent cosmic entity who kickstarted the events of the 1980s Secret Wars and whose species were involved in the 2015 story. The rumor that the MCU's Beyonder will be presented as a Kang variant has been met with skepticism by many fans. And while I can see the appeal behind reimagining the character like this, I too am pretty unsure about this rumor. One thing that is for sure is that Kang will definitely have some involvement with the incursions that have been ravaging the multiverse. After all, Loki revealed that Kang is now the new leader of the Time Variance Authority, who are responsible for pruning the timeline and preventing these incursions from happening in the first place. With the multiverse now cracked wide open, there's plenty of opportunity for Kang to jump from universe to universe, planting his flag and destroying any worlds that refuse to bow to him. The trail of chaos that he leaves in his wake could be the very thing that causes our heroes to begin hopping universes as well, visiting some unfamiliar and some very familiar worlds to recruit allies to stop him once and for all. Of course, this multiversal travel would have the added result of worsening the incursions, amping up the pressure on our heroes to stop Kang before the entire multiverse is wiped out. So in general, it's a bit difficult to guess exactly how major of a role Kang will play in Secret Wars because of just how big the film is shaping up to be. Obviously, we can assume that there's probably going to be a whole bunch of multiverse cameos, but aside from that, we really have no idea what's going to happen. I mean, for all we know, that could be the entire film. Three hours of Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man and Hugh Jackman's Wolverine and Chris Evans' Human Torch just making inside jokes at each other. Basically, just the Illuminati scene from Multiverse of Madness stretched out really long. The Illuminati? But something tells me that Kang's story won't end with Avengers 5, and that he'll still have a big part to play in Secret Wars. Marvel's done a lot to set up the Conqueror, what with his backstory and takeover of the TVA and Loki, his ties to the Fantastic Four, the potential connections created in Shang-Chi and Ms. Marvel, and, of course, his upcoming debut and probable escape from the Quantum Realm in Ant-Man 3. Only time will tell just what kind of effect Kang the Conqueror will have on the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and it just so happens that time is his greatest weapon. Hey everybody, I'm Matt Sonic, I made this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. Please make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more fun comic book content, and let us know in the comments if you're excited to see Kang conquer the MCU. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.